Hello, welcome back. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And here we have part seven now of the wonderful Hachette Lancaster Bomber B3. And this is actually um, a special, special 464 uh, dam buster. And um, this model, if you don't know, it comes with lots of working parts and everything. So here we are now with part seven. So this is, well, sorry, pack seven. So this is my third delivery now I've had from Hachette. And in that delivery now, the, um, the little bonus you get is a binder. So we've got a lovely ring binder here for putting all our magazines in. You'll notice all the magazines have these wire loops on them so they can go in there and you can easily index through and roll them over without too much trouble at all. So there we are. So um, really, really nice to have that. So very, very nice indeed. Right, so... Let's have a look what we've got in pack seven. If you want to subscribe to this, um, I'm going to put a screen up now. You can look on the QR code. You can scan that with your phone or you can look at the email address across the bottom of the email address. The site address at the bottom, you can go in there and you can subscribe. And if you've already bought like parts one, two, three and four or whatever, you can start to subscribe from parts, um, part five, say, for example. And when you do subscribe, you will get all the free gifts. You will get one free copy. And go from there. So in this one we've got a box of bits so we've reduced on our um, plastic waste which is good for the environment. So we'll put that box of bits to, to one side and we'll have a quick look at the magazine. So I'll turn the light down. So what have we got in here? We have as usual we've got an image of the model on its base and everything. We've got all the contacts here for customer services. I am hearing from you guys with your comments and everything that the customer services at Hachette are absolutely second to none. So that's really good to hear, good news. Um, here we've got all the parts that we're gonna get and then down here we've got the name of all those parts with their relevant numbers. We've got our assembly instructions, which is nice because we've got quite a bit going on here with the, uh, the starboard fuselage half. And then here we're looking at the, we usually get a couple of stories in the magazine, which is really nice. And I don't know how they do it. A lot of the pictures, obviously, I've seen before. I'm a big Lancaster fan, but they actually do seem to find some photos that I've never seen, which is quite surprising for me. Um, so what we've got here is a feature all about S for Sugar. S for Sugar, uh, POS, used to be OLQ. Now, if you've got the... Um, the Hong Kong Models Kit, it comes with OLQ and, and POS. I think it's OLQ, but it definitely comes with POS. Um, so you can build either of them. She was rebuilt um, and absolutely totally refurbished. And she currently sits today in Hendon. So a lot of people do like to model POS. R5858, I think, R5885 was she. Um, it will say in here, our favorite five or I can't remember the number now, but anyway, never mind. Um, uh, five eight six eight. There we go. So, uh, yeah, if, if you are modeling this aircraft, be very careful about what sort of uh, period you're going to model it in if you're worried about accuracy. Because she originally would have had windows in the fuselage, uh, but then after she was rebuilt, she didn't. Um, there's lots and lots of changes, and I think all that's actually left of the original R5868 is the centre section, I think. Don't, don't count me on that, or quote me on that. But I know the complete rear fuselage was replaced, the nose was replaced. Uh, there are pictures in various books of her just sat there as just a centre section. Um, some people say she was reskinned. Personally, I don't believe that. I don't think they would have taken the time. I think they probably would have fitted a new section. Um, did you know in Bomber Command crews had to complete 30 operations to claim a tour of operations and then they were rotated to another job, often in training command? I didn't know that. Americans was 25, wasn't it? So um, you can read all about the uh, what POS was up to here. And then we got fact file. Um, and that's the uh, code for the, um, like this one is S for sugar. You know, you've got um, uh, J. Is there J here? J for jig. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was J for Johnny. Uh, so there she is now. That's how she sits today in the, in the museum at Hendon. It's worth a visit if you haven't been. It's fantastic. And uh, go and have a look at POS. You can't get inside her or anything, but you can have a look. Good look in the Bombay and that. Um, there we go. And then over the page, the rise of the Luftwaffe, 1935 to 1939. 
And uh, when, Adolf Hitler, when Adolf Hitler rose to power in the Nazi party in '33, he promised to return Germany's former greatness and rebuild the country's fighting forces. And there are many, many documentaries you can find on YouTube all about that. And uh, what they did was uh, very, very naughty. Um, but they sort of craftily managed to put together and train a lot of pilots for airliners and stuff like this. And um, they built some airliners, which then became bombers. And you can read all about that. Um, Field Marshal Erhard Milch, born in Wilmshaven, Wilhelmshaven, sorry, in 1892. Um, he resigned his commission to work for Hugo Juncker in 1926. He became director of Deutsche Lufthansa. He received credit for the involvement of the Spanish Civil War and the early years of World War II. He fell from grace after Operation Barbarossa, Barbarossa in 1941. After the war, he was imprisoned until 1954. He died in 72. There we go. You can see one of their um, beautiful gliders there. And then there's a, a Junkers 87 Stuka in a dive. And then finally on here, we've got what's coming in issue eight, which I actually have here. They've sent me my third sort of part. My third box is um, parts uh, seven, eight, nine and ten. So you're going to get all those very shortly. So you can see coming in part eight, we've got the, um, the starboard fuselage panel two windows and some service electrical service panels um that picture is actually wrong that is actually the port side fuselage so i'm hoping they don't send us another port because we've already got that one right so let's go have a look in the instructions so first things first in the front of the magazine you get here all your parts so we will get this bag open and the first thing we will do is check all our parts so we've got some lovely little reusable bags here and they're all very nice so we'll get the magazine over there, out of the way, so we can get these parts out of our bags. Never throw these um, Ziploc bags away because they're really handy to have. Very nice indeed. So they, that's going to come out of there. Okay, so we've got that there, we've got that there, and then we've got this little Ziploc bag here. So we've got our railing there, we've got our navigator seat there, we've got the engineer's panel there, we have a curtain here, um, this is, what is 07G? Recuperator, okay so we can repaint that if we want to. Don't forget guys, I keep saying it, but I will be shortly putting together a video or two where I completely rework all this, correct the colours and change some bits and pieces around. It's got a tiny little handle there. We've got a, what's that, 07H oxygen economizer. Okay, I should know that. That should be painted black. And then we've got 07I's hinge mechanism for flight engineer seat. And then we've got 07J, which is a slow running cutout panel. And that's one of the things I like about this. I'm a big Lancaster fan. But I don't know what a lot of the controls are in the instrument panel. So it's interesting to see uh, what the names of all these things are. So 07K is a panel lamp, so I'll have to paint the end of that silver or something. The other thing I'm looking at in this, um, we're noticing building up this model, the instrument panel and all the panels around the engineer station and navigator station and everything, they don't appear to have any decals in the gauges. They just have a panel like this, like you can see there, where there's no decals. Um, I have actually seen people building up to step 12 and they're sort of putting all the fuselage together. So it would appear, I, I was wondering if at some point that before we put all this together that Hachette will be providing decals for the instruments, but it would appear that's not the case. So watch out for my other videos where I do the update corrections or whatever. I'll be using some aftermarket decals from Airscale to really make those panels and everything pop and make them look a little bit better. Because remember, this thing has got lights inside it, so it lights up the cockpit and everything. So the best, you know, the best job we can do is the best job we can do. So we've gone through our parts. We've made sure they're all here. So we've got everything there. So step one is to identify the fixing point for us to get this like this. Hang on. I don't like having a magazine in the shop when I'm filming because it messes up all the white balance. Um... Identify the fixing part for 07G, which is the, I can't remember what it's called now, <laughs> recuperator, wasn't it? Um, in the forward end of the starboard framing, 
the D shaped peg on the back of 07G fits into a hole, and this is a push fit connection. So we're going to take this here. Here's our uh, recuperator. There is our big D shaped pin on there, you can see, and that is going to go into that hole. There, yeah, that's going to go into that hole there and push down. In fact, I'm going to put the light back on bright so we can see that has gone in there now. Now that's pushed in there, but it doesn't want to stay in there. So I'm going to grab some super glue. So I'm going to use my favorite, which is the VMS Flexi 5K CA, so much better than all these cheap sort of pound shop super glues you get because it's flexible, um, it takes longer to dry, which is a great hand, handy, uh, handy feature. And because it's black, you can see where it is. So if you are using it and you're going to paint over anything, you won't end up with great big globules of glue everywhere that don't show up until you put the paint on. So I'm going to glue that into there. There we go. So that's glued in now, and then I'm going to use a cotton bud on the back just to mop up the excess. There we go. So that's glued in, so I'm glad I've got that glued in because that wasn't a very tight fit. Take the handrail 07C and fit it in the fuselage frame as indicated. Small D-shaped pegs on the ends of the arms on the back of the rail fit into corresponding holes. This is a push fit connection. So we've got the D-shaped pins on here, one, two. You can see those there. And they are going to go into these two holes, one, two. So I don't know how they're going to fit, if they're going to be tight, or if I've got the rail upside down even. Yeah, I'm not confident that's going to stay there. So I think what I'm going to do with this, because it's yellow, what we're going to do is grab a drop of this super glue and just put a drop on the back of each pin and that will capillary in there. I'm not even sure the super glue will work on this plastic because it feels like a, a sort of vinyl type plastic. It's quite soft. So there we are, right? And then we're going to take the, this is the uh, control panel. So this is 07J and that is going to fit Fit the peg at the back of the cutout into the D-shaped hole. This is a push fit connection. Note the two holes below the position, position of 07J. So it's telling us to note those two holes. We don't fit this in there. This is going to go into there like so. And once again, I'm going to put a drop of super glue on the back. Right, coming over the page, we're now going to fit the oxygen economizer 07H in place on the frame beneath 07J. So here's our oxygen economizer. As I say, this should be black, and for some reason it's been painted green. But we'll sort that out on my other one. So I'm going to put a drop of glue in those holes, just like so. Just like that. Push that one home, make sure you don't get any glue on your fingers. There we go. That probably would have stayed in without the glue, actually. There we are, that's got in all the way home. So you can see that on there now. And as you can see, the detail in this model is astounding. It really is good. Now we're going to take the interior panel, 07B. This is where all the, the conduit and the cables and everything run. And this is going to go into these three holes here. One, two, three. Oh, four. No, four. And we've got one, two, three, four. So these are just going to push fit into there. So there we go, they're all in. I think that's probably going to stay in place. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. So that's that fitted. And then on to step six, we've got the engineer, the flight engineer seat. So we've got the flight engineer seat itself and we've got this bracket which is going to go on here and we've got to make sure we get this the right way around. So if you look on here you can see we have like an L section here. There's like an L section shape there 
that's going to go onto there like that. Now I've got a feeling this is going to have to be glued. Yeah, that's going to want to keep falling off. And you can see also we have in here, there is a recess there and a recess there where that rod is going to sit. So what I'm going to do is put a drop of glue here underneath that peg. And then we can push this into position like so. Okay, so that's our engineer seat into position and we can put another drop of glue in that hole if we want to. Just to be sure, because that is not a very tight fit at all. Okay, so you can see now that's on there like that and they're showing you that in the instructions. Coming over the page, we are now going to fit the engineer's seat in the folded position. So if you want to have an engineer seated, you're going to have to do some fancy work. And that's going to push in there. And that is an extremely tight fit. So. There we go. That is a very, very tight fit. So that's not going anywhere. Okay, so that's going like that. And then coming down to step nine, take the seat back 07F. Now the seat back is like a strap that pulls across. And check how the rectangular peg near the top fits into the rectangular socket next to part of as indicated by the arrow. Apply a little glue to the peg and fix in place if necessary. So we've got a rectangular hole here. And we've got a rectangular peg and this strap just hangs down. Now... I'm not sure that it actually hangs down like this, but it, it's hanging down anyway. I would have thought it would probably hang straight. Oh, I see they've got it sitting on top of that. So it's going to actually sit on top of this ducting here. OK, so. Right, that's OK then. So what we're going to do is put a drop of glue in that hole. Just like so. And then we can fit. So I'm going to remove the paint from the end of here to get a stronger joint because otherwise you're just gluing paint. So that's going to fit into that rectangular hole and the bottom's going to go under there like that. That's it. And there we are, that's sat in position. And if we really want to, just to make sure it's not going to fall out because it has got a very small location, we can put a drop of super glue in here, which is going to be hidden once the model's built. You won't see any of it. OK. And there we are. Right. Now, moving on to the instrument panel, the engineer's panel, sorry. We've got the panel and we've got the lamp. And the lamp is going to go into that hole. So we've got a D-shaped hole in the top there we have a d-shaped pin on this lamp so that's going to go into that hole and we do need some glue on there so i'm going to take that out so i'm going to grab my tweezers and we're going to put some glue into that hole like so and then we can stick this light in there and that will stay in position. And there we are. And I am just going to grab a fine sanding stick and just remove that little raised area on the top of there. And just make that a bit smoother on the top. It's a shame they didn't put that on the bottom. So there we go. So coming over the page, we've now got these two. We've got two pegs on here, two holes in the side here. So this engineer's panel is going to go into those two holes. Is it going to need glue? No. That's a very nice tight push fit. So that's pressed into there. Absolutely fine. So that is that, guys. That is our completed step seven. And as you can see, as I've said many times already, 
this model is turning into a very, very nicely detailed model. Um, you know, for a part work, it is very, very nice. So don't forget, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you want to get one of these, get on over to Hatchet Partworks with the uh, link I put up at the beginning of the video and get yourself subscribed and you can build along with me. Um, all the videos are here. They're all in the playlist. You'll be able to watch them all. I think this model is built over about 130 parts, so we're looking at two years. Um, but uh, as you can see, with the level of detail going in here, it's um, it's quite stunning. Just a quick word, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to repeat myself in a couple of videos. You saw me review the, if you follow my channel, you'll, saw, you'll have seen me review the David Allen <clears throat> um, uh, cockpit figures. And this is the, they're, they're, they're um, sculpted by Doug Craner. This is the RAF Danbuster Lancaster, full action crew of seven for Border Models Lancaster. So you have... The pilot, the flight engineer standing next to the pilot with his hands on the controls. You have a bomb aimer led in the front with his aiming device in his hand. You have the front gunner sat in the gun firing his gun. Um, standing navigator looking out of the window on the side. And then you have the seated wireless operator and you have the rear gunner. Now these figures are absolutely stunning. David has been in touch and said that a couple of people have approached him about buying these for this model. I really don't think you are going to manage to fit the guys in the turrets. Yes, you're going to get the bombing in there fine. The pilot, the flight engineer um, and the navigator are all going to sit absolutely fine. I'm sure of it. I know the pilot will. I know the, navigate, the um, navigator will. I know the flight engineer will because there's somewhere for him to stand. Um, and it's correct with the seat folded up. But uh, the turrets, the front and rear turret, you're not going to get the figures in there unless you take the guns out or do some work it's going to take a hell of a lot of work you may just get the head and shoulders in there or just the feet or, i don't know but you might not want to waste your money on getting turret figures for the hatchet model these are made to fit the border model lancaster there's also a set made to fit the hong kong models lancaster they will fit the hatchet kit but the the turret gunners i think you're going to struggle with so um you have been warned um just letting you know putting that out there so there we go. So as I said, I'm going to repeat myself a couple of times on that one just to make sure the message gets out there. I don't want you guys to go wasting your money and then finding you can't fit them in there at all. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all very, very soon for part eight. And um, <clears throat> as I say, we'll get on part eight and we'll do these sides and everything. Now, as you know, I started doing this by buying it myself and this is as far as I got. So now from part eight onwards, it's all um, new to me. So it's, there's no repeats or anything. And the original videos I made have now been removed. So you'll only get the, the latest ones from the Hatchet sponsored build. And I've also noticed on here, there is, if you want to get rid of it, there is a sprue tab on there that we can get rid of if you want to. Okay. In fact, you could come in with a sanding stick and just sand that away. There you go. Okay, so um, as I say, if you want to see improvements, I will be doing a video series on making improvements to this model. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.